Which of these two passwords is harder to crack? A lot of people would intuitively say that the first one must be better because it looks so complicated. But this is just our little petty human perspective. While mindfish keyboard water underscore proof 2781 is much easier for us humans to remember than the other one, it is actually the stronger password. It has seven more characters than the alternative, which makes it much, much harder to crack using brute force. Now you might say, what about a dictionary attack? These five words are all part of the English dictionary. You're right, but the password is still basically impossible to guess. The words are unrelated, there is no connection between them, one of them is written in lowercase while the other four are not, and we have a special character and a four-digit number at the end. So first you would have to know the structure of the password. Four words followed by a special character, a lowercase word, and a number. And then you would still have too many possibilities to guess. Dictionary attacks are effective when the target uses specific words in their password. So if the password contains names, birthdays, etc. for example. In this case, however, it won't help the attacker much. So yes, the second password is more secure than the first one, even though the first one is not bad at all. In this video, I want to talk about what makes a password secure by talking about general principles and looking at a couple of examples. So let's get right into it. Let me emphasize one thing right away. You can have the most secure password on earth, which meets all the criteria. If you write it down on a piece of paper or store it in a clear text file on your computer, or if you install a keylogger, or if you visit a phishing website, it won't help you. So yes, choosing a secure password is important, but storing it properly is equally important. We will talk about this at the end as well. The first thing that is important when designing a secure password is obviously the length. This is due to the exponential runtime complexity of the brute force algorithm. If someone tries to guess your eight character password using brute force, and they have, let's say, 75 characters to choose from for each position, this will result in 75 to the power of eight possibilities that they need to try. That's this number here. It's about one quadrillion. Add one more character and it becomes 75 quadrillion. Use only five characters and there are only two billion possibilities, which is definitely manageable. A really good password should have at least 12 characters, but preferably more than 20. This graph shows you why choosing a long password is important. Obviously, you also want to mix up the characters you use. If an attacker knows that you only use lowercase letters in your password, the base for the exponential function is now only 26. A password with eight characters would then only have 208 billion possibilities. Supercomputers can easily crack that. By mixing up characters and choosing a long password, we increase the base and the exponent of the exponential function. If you choose to only use numbers in your password, an eight character, or in this case, an eight digit password, would give you 100 million possibilities. Using only lowercase letters with the same length would result in 208 billion possibilities. Using uppercase and lowercase letters in your password would result in 52 characters that you can choose from, and with a length of eight characters, this would result in about 53 trillion possibilities. By using numbers, mixed case characters, and even special characters, we can increase that base size to 81. And then, the longer your password, the better. So that's it for brute force. But what about the targeted dictionary attack? What if the attacker knows a lot of personal information about you? Your name, your birthday, your pet's name, etc. If you include any of that information in your password, this makes it way easier to guess it. Also, don't use any common passwords or passwords that consist of related words. If your password is long but consists only of peripheral computer devices, for example, like mouse, computer, monitor, joystick, etc., it is still easier to guess. Having said all that, you probably still want to be able to remember your password easily. So let's talk about a couple of tricks here. One thing that you can do is, is you can take a sentence from a book or a movie and deliberately misspell it at multiple points. You can also take a quote and just pick the first letters of each word. Then you just have to mix up the cases a little bit and add some special characters and there you go. For example, let's take the quote from Elon Musk, when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. This quote can be turned into that password here. The letters before the underscore are the first letters of each word in the quote. After that, we have EM2022 for Elon Musk and, even though it's not true, the year that he said this in. 
We can now make this even more complicated by using lead speak and placing some random special characters in the password. Let us now take a look at a couple of examples of passwords that are good or bad. Try to understand why the shown passwords are good or bad. What about these here? All right, those are obviously the worst passwords, but you hopefully knew that before watching this video already. How about this here? While they're probably better than most people's passwords, they're still not good passwords. All the words are related and the numbers are commonly used. What do you think about these? These are all good passwords, even though the first and the third one are better than the other two due to their length. The second one is based on the Elon Musk quote from before, and the last one is based on the sentence, I don't want anyone to know my password because it's my secret and it's not 123. If you are too lazy to come up with a good password, you can also use a password generator. It will produce a good password, but it's going to be hard to remember. As I already said in the beginning, the best password won't help you at all if people are able to socially engineer you or play spyware onto your computer. So let us last but not least briefly talk about some general guidelines. Never ever tell your password to anyone, no matter what happens, especially not via mail or phone. If you accidentally told it to someone, change it right after that. Also, never write your password down on a piece of paper unless you put it in a safe afterwards. Never ever store your password in clear text anywhere, not in files, not in code, not in databases, and also not in your browser. Always use two-factor authentication when possible. Avoid using the same password on multiple platforms. Change your passwords on a regular basis. Even if someone takes the time to brute force it, it won't help them since you change it every couple of months. Data breaches also become less relevant. If you struggle with remembering all the different passwords, you can also try to use a password manager, but be aware that this is a single point of failure. The master password should be extremely good and you would have to memorize it without writing it down. Maybe you want to have multiple password files with different passwords. And maybe you even want to hide your password files, for example, in a JPEG file using steganography. I have a video on that. So I hope you now know how to maximize your password security. I hope you will take the advice and start using strong passwords. This might help you avoid some unpleasant experiences in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, hit the notification bell and see you in the next video. Bye.